wanted to show you something. This is the project that I want all of us to build that we would be building hands on project for our uh, prep course. It's a very wonderful business card that you can create for your own self and you can share it as well with your details. If anyone wants your card online, you can share this card after creating and entering your details and so much more. So this is the project that I created uh, recently and I wanted all of us to experience how a very basic and uh, uh, like uh, basic knowledge of HTML, CSS and can create beautiful things. So there are multiple things in this project. If we if we just have a look over it, there's an image which is perfectly round. We'll see how to insert an image, how to make the edges round. There are heading, paragraph, background color is different. Here, background color is different. Then you have these beautiful icons over here. Your text, your uh, uh, numbers, these icons, all these have been boxed into separate uh, structure, which shows that they have different entities. Then you have these beautiful icons over here. When you hover over them, they just, you see, they change color, they change the uh, size of the icon and so on. And if we click on this particular icon, the page would open. The, I've entered the Facebook homepage, the login page. However, when you create your business card, you can enter your, your own Facebook address, your own Twitter address. So if I open this, it, it takes me to the login page. However, you can mention your Twitter address, wherein user would be directed to your Twitter account, your Twitter feeds, and uh, so on. Similarly, your uh, Instagram account, LinkedIn account, there are multiple options you can put in. This is a beautiful layout for a business card in which we would see how HTML and CSS gets combined and different things can be used to create simple card model. And I'm telling you card models are heavily used in websites. If you open Amazon, there are uh, product card descriptions. If you open some grocery store websites, there are uh, different card descriptions which hold the information. You open uh, traveling websites, uh, there are uh, different dis uh, card describing your flight details, uh, itineraries, and so much more. So through this, we would understand how a small thing can be used later on in a website at multiple stages. And for this particular project, we would be needing certain uh, topics that should be covered beforehand. I've made a list of those topics. I'll quickly pull up that screen. Okay. Yeah. So these are the list of topics that we would be covering HTML topics and CSS topics. So now uh, like we have six classes right today and tomorrow. And after that, we have four classes till 9th of, uh, I think till 9th of uh, January, we have our prep course, right? So we have almost six classes. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thinking to cover these topics in three to four days and then uh, last two days, we would be building that prep course project using all these concepts that we would uh, be learning. So if you see, we have already covered this one. We've already covered this text elements, unordered ordered list. We've covered attributes. We've covered classes and ID. So today I'm thinking we would be covering almost, almost uh, HTML part. If, if not, hardly this one and this one would be left or else we would be covering this also almost HTML part. And later on, if we come to CSS, we've covered this one, how to embed style sheet, what are uh, rules, what are your accessing uh, class and IDs, and then we would uh, cover specific CSS part. So that would be much more interesting because then structural part would be finished, basic structural part, and then we would be moving to styling that structural part. So any doubts in the topics that we have covered so far in this one and in this one. So we would be coming uh, back and forth to this slide to check if uh, if anything, uh, we'll keep on marking the topics that we have covered so that we'll have a clear idea. So these are some other CSS topics that we would be covering, like styling your images, display properties, adjusting uh, adjusting your margins and padding then font, text, background properties. Then there's a very amazing property, nth child property in CSS. We would be studying that. The transformation and transitions that you saw on that uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter icons, when I was hovering over that, we would be doing that. This hover uh, pseudo class basics we would be studying. So 
these are the topics that we would be covering in the remaining prep course. And then we would be building that beautiful uh, mini uh, business card project. You can use that project uh, for your own self also. You can post it on uh, GitHub. You can show it to anyone. That is your own project. And it's wonderful to have a hands-on experience. And uh, regarding, uh, so uh, we would need to add tables and forms. Yes, we can add tables and forms. If you say I, I'll add tables and forms in prep course only. So we'll add tables and forms in prep course only. We'll, we'll do that. Definitely we'll do that. So we'll, this is just a basic idea. We'll add tables and forms over here. We'll complete that together. Okay. So uh, any questions regarding the topics that we would be covering? So anything you want us to, uh, anything that we've covered and you want a bit clarity on that before moving ahead with today's lectures. Today we would be covering your anchor tags, your file paths, uh, your images. These are the major topics that I would be covering today. Uh, nope, let's get started. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. Let's move ahead and uh, let's see what are hyperlinks. So we have studied hyperlinks in the networking uh, lectures also, but let's uh, view hyperlinks from HTML point of view. A very quick overview, if I if I'll just go through it, hyperlinks are basically uh, were, I, I used to create connections between pages. They allow us to navigate quickly and easily. So if I just show you an image, hyperlinks are basically a, a web like structure through which you can navigate from one page to other. And there are millions and millions of web pages that are connected through hyperlinks. Now hyperlinks are, are like click, clickable pointers to your resource. You click on something that take you to that resource. So if we scale down the global version, if this is the global version, if this we call it as global version, if we scale it down a little bit and we see how hyperlinks work on a website level, then it would look something like this. This is your home page. And there are certain pages associated with it. Like this could be your products and services. This could be your contact us. This could be your FAQs. And this could be uh, something else. Uh, what can we say? Customer care support and so much more. So these are few pages linked to your own website. So this is at website level. Now, if we further scale it down, if we further see that how hyperlinks work, then it would look something like this. Hyperlinks is just like a link between two pages. So this link, we want to study this link, how two pages are connected and that we would see using HTML. So let me visit a, a beautiful website to help you understand how hyperlinks are working. So if we see this one, this is a BBC homepage. Now this home page contains so many hyperlinks, so many points uh, that are taking us to multiple news stories that are taking us to different areas of site. We can subscribe for uh, the, uh, we can sign in, we can subscribe. These are all hyperlinks like your home page, news page, sports, real work life. These are all hyperlinks. Now, interesting thing to note that almost, almost any web content, anything you see on web page can be converted to a hyperlink. For instance, if I click this one, this is an image. If I click this one, this is a hyperlink. It, to, it took me to a particular story. So everything, everything on web page, suppose this is an image. If I click on this one, it is taking me to a new story. So everything different, uh, every, well, I would say every element on web page can be converted into a hyperlink. So this was a very broad idea to understand how hyperlinks are working. Now, what is the motive behind to understand this? The motive behind is uh, there are basically, I would say two scenarios. We also started in the networking lecture. There are external links and internal links. So how would I say internal and external? Suppose this is your domain. This bbc.com is your domain. If you click news, this bbc.com domain does not change. Only the path, the news has been changed. If you uh, click on sport, you've been taken to sport page. This is internal hyperlinking. But if you click on something that takes you to another domain, 
So if there is some other page, let's see. So there, the, there are no other pages over here, but if we uh, write uh, images, uh, let's say we write computer images. images. Now I'm on Google right now, but if I click this one, this is taking me to Pixabay. Now this is external hyperlink. Earlier I'm on Google right now, just see this one. The domain is Google, but if I click on something else, it is taking me to a new domain. This is called external hyperlinking. So let me show you an image. Uh, it would be much easier to understand. Yeah. So just see this one. This is your website. Let's say any website example.com. Now these are your web pages. Like this is your home. This is your contacts. This is your FAQs and so much more. So this particular box that you see, this particular box is internal hyperlinking. This is internal. You are not changing your domain. You are revolving around the pages that are associated particularly with your website. But if there is some another link that points to some other website, other domain, then that is your external hyperlink. And both type of hyperlinks can be created with HTML. Now let's see how do we create these hyperlinks. Now, these hyperlinks are created with a special tag. This hyperlink, if we if we call this as hyperlink, this is a link. Now this is created with special tag and that tag is called anchor tag and it is represented by lowercase a. So let's see, let's explore what anchor tag is. So anchor tag is basically used to link one page to another. It can be in same website, it can be in different website. Now let's write some code and see how it works, how it actually works. So let me pull up the VS code for us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's see. So this is normal page that we were working. And now I want to create a folder in this one. I'll create a folder called hyperlinks. So it's just a folder where we would be practicing hyperlinks. It has nothing to do with it. I can rename it to anything. I can call it as uh, links practice. Practice. Links practice. Now in this, I want to create a file. Let's say I'll call it as index.html. Right? Now this index.html is a simple file wherein I would be writing normal HTML document structure and we would see how hyperlinks are created. So let's write normal document structure. We'll simply write our boilerplate and in this let's let's write it as external website. Yeah, linking to to external. website. Okay. So how can we do it? How can we move ahead? So if I, if I just write, this is my home page. Suppose I want to write, this is my home page and I want to go to Google from my home page. I want, there should be a link that would take me to Google. So I'll simply write a, and I'll write, let's say search with Google. Now, if I hit save and I'll just uh, open my live server. Okay, so I'll quickly minimize this one. Let's minimize this. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you see simple page H1 heading and an anchor tag. This is an anchor tag, simple lowercase a. I've written some text inside it. Now, when I click on this, nothing is working. Nothing is working. Now, how to access the web page? How do we, how do we access it? Now there's an attribute. This attribute is called href. 
href. href means hyperlink reference. Now, whenever you write some attribute, you would get this description. I would suggest always read this description that is provided by VS Code. It tells you what that attribute does for you. So as, it's, uh, as it is saying that it contains a URL that the hyperlink points to. Very self-explanatory. So we know what attribute, how to write an attribute. We write the proper uh, attribute name. We write the quotes and there must be something. In this, we write URL. Not this URL, but the URL to which we want to visit. So now if I want to visit Google, I would write Google. So I will just simply write HTTPS and I can copy the address also, but I'll simply write Google's address as of now. So it would be simply like google.com. Just see the difference. Just see this difference over here. Automatically, it has been turned blue with the line below the text. Now my cursor is now this the cursor is no longer uh, the arrow. It's a pointer. It's it's a hand now. So if I click on this one, automatically Google page opens. So we have created an external hyperlink. This is an external hyperlink. Understand we are going from our website to some other website. Because if we come back, our address was this one. There is no Google anywhere mentioned on our domain address. But when we click on this one, the domain address changes. Whenever this happens, this, this uh, tells us that this is the external website. Now, let's, let's uh, see the syntax of uh, our anchor tag on an image. So we see this simple anchor tag looks like this text and element, and there is an attribute href URL, and we see uh, the search with Google written over here. So we call this one. This is your anchor text. Remember, this is your link text. It can be a text. It can be an element also. It can be an image also. We can create an image as an anchor tag. We can create an image. Uh, we can create, we can put an image inside the anchor tag, and it would be pointing to the link that would be mentioned over here. Now, how this happens? Now, this happens because there are two types of uh, paths. One is your absolute file path and other is your relative file path. Let's understand absolute file path. Now, absolute file paths are easy to understand and use. These links include domain name. So anytime, anytime you see something in the URL as google.com or facebook.com, any, anything like this, that is called your absolute file path. And your absolute file path will link your web page to another website, not to your own website. So let's see over here. Just see absolute file path. The links include domain name. Absolute file paths are known as websites. For example, google.com and uh, facebook.com or anything. And this is the general syntax, HTTP, google.com, and so much more. They, you, you can write have Instagram.com or anything. Like I used uh, icons, then those icons were placed inside this area. It could have been a text. It could have been an element. I placed those icons over here. I've written the address to that particular website. And whenever, whenever I click that icon, that is, that is taking me to this particular path. Absolute file path. So uh, let's go back to our VS code. So this is this region. This region is our absolute file path, which is URL. This is your anchor, anchor, anchor text, link text. And this whole area is your anchor tag. Now let's see another attribute, a very nice attribute. Let me, yeah. So right now, right now, if I'm clicking over here, see the same web page, I'll just close these ones. Yeah. So right now when I'm clicking over here, it is uh, opening in the same tab. Now, if I want this particular web page to open in a new tab so that my home page is always there for me to access different things, then there is an another attribute. That attribute is called target attribute. 
and that has multiple options. One of the options is this underscore blank. So whenever you select underscore blank, whenever and you click on this one, a new tab would open. I'll quickly save this file. Now see, if I'll click this one, a new tab is opening. I'm always having access to my home page. So the difference, if I close, if I just delete this one, hit save, I'll close the page. And if I open, it is opening in the same tab. So most of the times uh, we want the external websites to open in the new tab. For that, we use this particular attribute, target attribute. So if you hover over this, you'll get description of every value the target attribute can hold. Like the blank, it loads the URL into new browsing context. This is usually a new tab. So if I hit save and go, go back and search with Google, it would, oh, okay. It's not, opening. let's see. Yeah, so it's opening a new tab, right? So any doubts in this one, this was your absolute path. This was setting up an external hyperlink. So I'll quickly write it as external hyperlink. So let's write it as external hyperlink. So any doubts in external hyperlink before we move ahead with internal hyperlinks? So now for internal hyperlinks, we have relative paths. What are relative paths? These paths are very useful when you want to create links between your own pages within the same website. So now relative paths does not include domain name. This is the main difference. Relative paths do not include domain name. This has a big advantage that whenever at any point of time, if you wish to change your domain name, then your internal links will continue to work. You need not modify each internal link. All the internal links would continue to work because they do not include domain name. And in case you have changed the file structure order, this order, you've moved this file to somewhere else, this file to somewhere else. At that point of time, you have to modify the internal links. So internal links are always are always using relative paths. Let's see what are relative paths. We need, uh, there are three scenarios. So if you want to access your page, it can be in same directory, it can be in subdirectory, or it can be in different directory. So we'll see uh, all these scenarios. So let's, let's do one thing. I'll quickly write uh, three scenarios. So number one, we can write it as like this, same directory. Subdirectory and different directory. So we'll access this one first. I'll create an anchor tag. And let's say I want to access uh, uh, what can we do about us page? So let's say I want to access an about us page. About us page. So let's do one thing. Let's use this anchor tag in a list. It would be easier for us to understand. So just remember these three scenarios. So let's do one thing. We'll use three cases and in each case we are adding a hyperlink and in this I want to write about us. I want to access about us page. Over here I want to access contact us and similarly over here I want to access uh, FAQs frequently asked questions right. So I'll quickly save this one and we'll see the difference. Right now we have plain text. This has not been turned into any hyperlink. The reason is we have not used this href attribute. We are not pointing to a particular file or particular web address. So right now, if I click on this, nothing happens, nothing at all. 
So let's create three pages in our directories. This is uh, so this one links practice is the one holding index.html in the same directory. What are directory the folders in which these files are lying? So this is your root directory. HTML CSS folder is your root directory. It holds two other folders and three files. So this links practice is the directory for index.html. So I'll quickly add uh, about us over here. About us.html. So now let's write simple code and over here let's about us and here I'll simple write h1 h1 about us page. So right now it is not showing because it has not been rendered into live server. Now how to access it? How do we access the uh, page in same directory? So first we would mention the href attribute. I'll just minimize this one or this one. Okay, let's see. This is your anchor tag. We'll simple mention href attribute. In this, we have to write URL address. For external linking, the URL address is the domain address. For internal linking, it is the path where that particular file is lying. So this index.html and about us.html are in same folder. It's in same folder, links practice. And in order to get the files which are in same folder, you simply write the file name. So I will write about us dot HTML. You see, when I'm writing, I'm getting the uh, recommendation from the VS code also because it has found that file. I can quickly select that one also um, HTML. Yeah. So now if I hit save, just see this about us has been turned into a link. Now, if I want to open it into same tab, I would not add the target attribute, but if I want to open it into a different tab, a new tab, I would uh, add this attribute over here and I'll hit save. I'm just closing it as of now. So we can see a list holds an anchor tag and the anchor tag holds the path of that particular file. This target attribute is telling that we want to open this file into a new tab. And this is the text that we see on web browser, which become the hyperlink for us. It could be an image. It could be an icon. It could be a video or it could be uh, a simple plain text number also. Now, if I click this one, you see we have been directed to this is about us page. You just see this one. We have been directed automatically to this is about us page. Now what we can do, we can create an icon, uh, an anchor tag over here also that would say, take me to home page. Let's create that one. So let's add it in paragraph. So take me to, and I'll add anchor tag and home page. Now, if I want to add the attribute, uh, this one, what should be the address? What should be the address? Just put it in chat. If I want to go to home page from my about us page, I'm on about us page. I want to go to home page. These are in same folder. So if files are in same folder, we write simply the names of that file. So index.html. That's correct. So it is giving me suggestion also that it has found the file. So if I hit save, so now a home page icon is there. But if I click this one, it is taking me to home page, but in the same tab. I'm already on home page. In order to open this in new tab, what do we do? What is the attribute that we write? So just put it in chat quickly, right? And what should be the value? Perfect. It should be underscore blank, right? If I hit save, I'll just quickly close this one. I'm opening about us page. And from this, I'm going to home page. You see home page has been opened here also and here also. This was the previous one. This is the about us page and this home page has been opened by the about us page. So we can close this one. Perfect. So this was the case for the same directory. 
I'll just uh, remove it here. Paste it. This is the same directory one. Now I want to go to subdirectory. So what is subdirectory? Subdirectory is when your main folder has another folder inside it. And within that folder, the file is lying. So within links practice, I'm creating a folder. So uh, our file is contact us page. So I would just name it as contact us folder, no? contact us. And this folder holds a file called contact us dot HTML. I'll simply write basic boilerplates and the same uh, text content as well. So let's write. Okay, contact us. And here we'll write. So let's see. I'm just closing this one. I'm closing the Google page right now. Contact us page is not working. What do we need to do? We'll go to index.html over here. We need to provide the address. Then only it would work. I'll write the required attribute href and when your file is in subdirectory. Now that is the case. How do you do it? First, you have to access that directory and then go to that particular file. So how to access that directory? What is the name of that directory in this folder? So this is the directory. Remember, this is contact us page. So this about us and index.html are lying inside your links practice. So links practice and in from index.html, first we need to go to contact us. Earlier when we had to go to about us, we were simply writing the name of file. Now we would start with the name of folder. So we would write the name of directory. So I would write contact us, contact dash us. Now, in order, now in order to move to the file, we use the forward slashes. The forward slash is used to separate the path. It tells that now the directory name has uh, ended and we want to move forward. Whenever I hit forward slash now, I would get the recommendation of all the files inside this directory. So I'm already getting contact us HTML. I can select that and it would take it. So if it is in subdirectory, another folder inside another folder, we'll start with the name of folder. We'll write forward slash and we'll start on writing the name of file and the, the VS code would give us recommendations that, okay, these files are already there. Do you want to select any one of these? So if I hit save, just see the contact us page has been formed. So. Now, if I click on this one, I'm been taken to contact us page. Any doubts in this sub directory earlier? Just understand in the same path, we are on the same path. Earlier, we were accessing this directory through, through file name. Now we are first writing the name of folder and then accessing the files inside it after entering the forward slash. This forward slash provides as a separator, which tells, okay, now the earlier, earlier directory name has finished and I want to access the files inside it. So there can be multiple directories also. For instance, there is another folder. Let's say, uh, let's say personal contacts, personal, con personal, let's name it personal. And in this, I have another file, let's say personal. Contacts dot HTML. Now this file, I'll simply write okay. personal and over here. Right. So now if I want to access this file, so if I'll just go to index.html and let me copy this line, this one, right? Now this is personal.
And if I want to access this file, what should be my approach? What should I write first? Remember, I'm at index.html. I want to go to this personal folder. So I'll just see what all levels do I have. First, I have to enter contact us. Okay, so I'll write contact us, contact us forward slash. Now in contact us, I'm getting two recommendations. Do I want to enter personal folder or I want to select this file? No, I want to enter personal folder. Okay, and then forward slash, I'm take, I've been taken to the files inside the personal folder. And then I select this one. And if I hit save, this personal becomes an anchor tag or hyperlink. So you have to move from one directory to the other and so on. If there are multiple directories, if, if you find your required file in the first directory only, then select that one or, or else keep on moving till you find your file. Right. So contact us slash personal slash, right. Absolutely correct. So this is the concept of subdirectory. Now comes the concept of a different directory. Let's see. So suppose your FAQs are outside this folder. If there, if your FAQs file is lying over here. So I'll just write FAQ.html. Now, if I write, let's name it as FAQ. Okay. So I'm at index.html. I'll write my attribute. Now, if I want to move above, if I want to move one level above, there's a special syntax for that. We use two dots first one, two, and then forward slash. Just see, I was in links practice. Where is my cursor? Yeah, I was in links practice. Now I'm outside links practice where all these folders and files are lying. So I have images folder. I have attributes file, FAQ file, first file tags and other things. Over here, I can select my FAQ dot HTML. So this is the way to move one level out of the current directory. And this is the way to move one level inside the sub directory. So suppose there is a, another folder over here. So let's say we create FAQ folder over here and we'll simply paste the file inside this FAQ folder. Now, if I want to go to my index.html and just now, if I hit, I know that I'm inside this one. I'll close the folder. Okay. I have to come outside this links practice, then go inside this and then access the file. So what would be the, my approach? I would simply write double dots forward slash. Now I know where my file is lying. It is lying inside this folder. So I'll write FAQ. Now see, now this particular syntax is working earlier. We moved one level up. Now we have to move into a sub directory inside the root directory. Now we are in the root directory. Currently this, this path has taken us to the HTML CSS folder where all these files are lying. So we'll select this one. We'll select this one and hit save. And this FAQ has been turned into a hyperlink. So if I click on this one, I've been taken to FAQ page. So any doubts in this, this is your internal hyperlinking and these are your relative paths. These are your relative paths and this is your absolute path. And in case at any point of time, sometimes you must have seen uh, the, uh, the path has been written as C drive forward slash, then the address. When the drive name comes, then in terms of paths, that is also referred as absolute path. But in terms of web technologies, web world, we call this as absolute path, something which contains domain, something which does not contain domain is called your relative path. Relative paths are used for internal linking. Absolute paths are used for external linking. Any doubts on this one before we move ahead? So let me show you the differences just for a quick overview. Just go through this and we'll see if you, if you, if we understand this one in same directory, we know we simply write the name of file, nothing else in sub directory. We write the name of folder and then the name of file. 
And if there are multiple subdirectories, we move from one folder to other and then the file name. And if we want to move one file up, one folder above in another directory, we use double dots, then the file name, or we have if we have to move two times up, up above, then we can use double dot slash, double dot slash till we reach the required file. And this is your relative path, three different scenarios. So any questions in this? Because now we would be moving to image tag. And uh, now uh, understanding image tag would be very, very easy for you because image tag has an attribute called SRC, that is source. And in that source, we either write the absolute path or we write the relative path. So let's see uh, what an image tag is, how we write it and how we actually access the different image uh, attributes. What are di uh, different image attributes? So let, let me open VS code. And okay, let's create another folder or we can create a simple file. Let's create a simple file over here. That is image practice dot html simple file again we are doing same thing and uh, let's say this is my image gallery and i'll simply mark it as right let's run our live server Okay, let's see, where is it? Yeah. yeah, this is our image gallery right now. No image has been inserted, but we would be inserting uh, the images into it right now. So how do we write an image tag? Image tag is a self-closing tag. You remember the HR tag, the uh, line break tag. Similarly, image tag is a self-closing tag. So we simply write IMG and click enter. You would automatically get the most two important source attributes or alt attributes. So sometimes you might see it like this. This is also fine. And sometimes you don't see it like this. In modern uh, HTML, HTML5, these are open tags. These are called open tags. They do not need anything, any content to be specified outside their enclosing brackets. So the pret prettier automatically removes it. So these are self-closing tags or independent tags. So this is how we write an image tag. So I'll just write as image, okay. image tag. So this is an image tag. Now what is SRC? Similarly, like in your anchor tag, there was href, the hyperlink reference, SRC is same thing. Either you enter absolute path, either you enter the file path. So let's uh, find some image. Let's say uh, I want to end, let's say top tourist destinations. We'll just pick one image. Okay, let's pick some nice image. Some, okay, let's do this one. So now what is the way if you want to get the absolute path, there is a way you just right click on this and copy the link address or copy image address, sorry, copy image address. So if you copy image address, you just put it over here, control V and control S. Let's see, we have okay, nice long image address. Let's see if I get the word wrap there is an option to word wrap okay so i'll do it later so this is the address this is the image address the address of this image so if i hit save and i see if i get this image on my page so it is there it is already there but the resolution is so high that it is occupying almost entire space so we can control it so i'll just write it as of now uh, where let's say height to be 100 pixels. Okay. So a 
a small image will 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 study this one just for our understanding i've pro written over here to make sure that we are able to see the image and the main point to notice the images are never pasted on your web page they are always sourced from either a database on the web or from your internal storage if you are sourcing the image from external database like the one we did that is called absolute path and that is done with the absolute path you see this is an image https this is a domain with certain protocols so this is your external image that you're linking if and what is alt text what is alt text very important attribute this is very useful for screen readers so you write simple description of this image so uh, like i see it's written hava mehil so we'll just copy this one and uh, how it helps number one if at any point your url is not working this text would be displayed number two if a blind person is trying to access your site then screen readers read this text to tell them which what this image represents so always write something meaningful so for instance if i just mess this url and if i hit save i just see the text appears over here so the screen readers would read this text so any image that you are using anything any particular image that you are using you should always make sure that you write something important or something uh, that that depicts that image for instance if i'm taking this image i'll copy image address and let's create another image tag so i'll just remove this one and if i hit save the image appears over here so always write something meaningful about it so let's say i um, top tourist destination so if i hit save and now if i just if some at certain point my url is not working that particular text would appear very important attribute so these are two major attributes and this was the way to enter your images uh from online database so let's uh, quickly correct our urls let's go back to the previous one yeah so let's increase the size also there's a one way also to increase the size i'll show you and now we are familiar with web developer tools at certain point of time you think your image size needs to be increased but you do not know how much it needs to be increased so just ho hover over this image you see this height i uh, height particular uh, styling being applied just use a arrow keys over here so let's see if it's working okay or you can change it over here also why is it working okay let's see over here we can write height uh, let's say 250 pixels so you can see your height being increased over here so these are temporary changes which you can control from here yeah from here you can control your image size you can check as per the page is it looking good is it not looking good and how much that needs to be there at certain point of time you do not know exact value you can make sure you can keep on hit and trial methods to check okay what should be the perfect size as per my page if i'm using 10 images for my image gallery if i'm using five images so let's add few more images and we'll use this particular attribute the moment i hit refresh this property would be gone because i've applied this property on my developer tools and not on my source code so these are temporary properties just for you to debug your code over here so if i hit refresh automatically the property is gone so let's uh, move ahead and add few more images from our so uh, like uh, Ahmed is asking, is this technique used for SEOs? Search engine optimizations might use alt text. That is absolutely correct because alt text reads the 
the description of the image and if so if a particular a user is typing some uh, text to find an image and if that matches with this address it automatically comes as a preferred result thank you amit for bringing this up it's a very beautiful uh, very very nice question so let's move ahead let's write another image tag simple image tag source attribute alt attribute alt attribute is the description source attribute is from where you're getting the image is it an external or internal now in internal i have already saved few images for us in this images uh, folder i have five images for us now let's let's go back and see how we'll how we'll target this images where are we right now we are at this folder right and on the same level this images folder is lying so we'll write images slash and we would get all the list of images we have so we can select one by one i'll just select uh, pyramids as of now and in this alt tag i can write pyramids of egypt and if i hit save you see this image is coming over here so this is the default uh, resolution of that image we can control it through styling so let me show you uh, another attribute another attribute is width and height so if i give width so width is from your left to right area so this area left to right if i give it 100% it would be extended to 100% if i give it 50% it would take 50% of your browser width so let's say i'll just uh, enter some uh, pixel value as of now let's say 400 pixels to keep it a big image for us so it is taking 400 pixels let's change this one also and let's give it some height so height let's have a nice height of 650 pixels okay so it's too much let's reduce it a little bit let's say 400 by 400 with giving keeping a square image for our gallery we keeping square image or we can reduce it to 350 also yeah nice so 400 by 350 we can uh, do same thing with this one 350 and we'll write width as 400 pixels so these two images of same size now one thing to notice is the image tag is an inline tag so if you place multiple images together they are bound to go side by side if there is required space so right now if i extend my browser see the images automatically go side by side inline elements take only that much space which is required for them to take so if i make it a bigger image it would take that much space and this would take the space that we have provided it so right now it's of size 400 by 350 pixels so this is uh, how images are being designed and structured on web page right now right now we are not using any styling only html part and this is what we call as internal path your you're getting the image from your storage from your internal storage this is your relative path and we can have uh, same thing like if i just copy paste this one and i'll quickly change the address of the other images so let's say i want the other images i had other images let's say eiffel tower i'll quickly call it as so I'm getting pyramid over here because I've not changed the link of this pyramid, but I'm getting Eiffel Tower over here. Similarly, I can change this one. I can go to Greece and let's say Acropolis. Yeah. 
Nice. And last, let's take another image. Images forward slash and we have Statue of Liberty as well, right? Statue of Liberty over here. And another image, we can add six images. Arch Mahal. Yeah. So now we have a nice gallery of images which are, which are of same size. One is taken from the web. The other ones we already have in our storage. And how we get to know which one is taken from the web? Through this address. Just see this one. This protocol tells us that it has been taken from web. And when there is no protocol, no domain name, nothing. So you can see this .com address, images.news18.com. Another, this is a domain, this one. And here you do not see any domain. So uh, Hamid is asking, can we store image in database? So if we have created our own database, if we are working with backend language, then we can store images in database. So this image is coming from some database that has been created by some company and they have stored the images over there. Similarly, we can also create our own database and that database can serve uh, only images also. So database is just collection of data. Data can be in any form. So main point to understand is how we source this image and are we providing the alt tag? So if I if I just supposedly for any reason, I mistyped the address of this particular image. Now this one is gone, but the screen reader would tell my user that this image is the Acropolis Greece image. And I can, uh, if I'm uh, debugging or testing through those screen readers, I can check, okay, which image has not been found. Or if a blind person is trying to access, they can find it uh, from here. So any questions in this, any questions uh, in how to access the image using the address from your storage and how to access the image from the web. So should we move ahead? Perfect. So there are uh, uh, other attributes we have started with height and so on, right? So let's see the next topic. Let's see which was our next topic. Let me pull up that slide. Okay. I'll just go to that one, right? Okay, this one, right? So now we have covered hyperlinks, we have covered anchor tags, we have covered absolute and relative file paths, HTML, and now let's study devs and spans. So span, very easy to understand, devs also very easy to understand. Let's, uh, let's move on to VS Code and uh, very quickly we'll be able to understand this. So let's open some other file, file which has some data our previous codes. I'm quickly closing these files because we do not need them right now. So, okay, we'll, we'll keep this file for our reference. I'm closing this one. And let's open this. Okay. Now, first let us understand what is span. Span is an inline tag. And this tag is used mostly with paragraphs to target a particular set of words. For instance, uh, this is your internet and networking. It can be it can be used with any text element for for your uh, for our ease. So we simply write span like this. And if I want to target only internet word out of here, I'll quickly write span inside this. 
my internet goes inside the span now what span does is it it is it has just provided us an additional functionality to style this word if i hit save nothing would happen over here nothing is happening but if i write some styling over here let's say i write style tag and within the style tag i write span and i want to style uh, let's say background color as yellow if I hit save, only the internet part has been captured. So the any any content, any text content that lies between the span helps us provide functionality to target that content. So you can use it multiple times. You can use it with paragraphs also. And uh, for instance, you, you can provide multiple styling also like font uh, weight. If I want to increase the boldness. So let's say I write a bolder. If I hit save, so it's already H1. I think that's why it's not working. So let's change color. So let's change font color. Or simply change color. Yeah. So let's write uh, red. Now, if I hit save, this particular part has been uh, marked red. So this is span. A simple inline element. What is inline element? That takes only that much space, nothing more. Only that much space, uh, which helps us style that particular content separately. Any doubts and spans? So let me show you a very amazing uh, extension, a Google extension that I use most often. Let me pull up the page. So I'll quickly copy this address over here. Right. So just see. I'll show you that uh, address. Uh, okay. This one. You see this one, this particular bug like uh, extension. This extension is called pesticide. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you the difference. What are differences between span, ID, and class? So uh, very look, ID and class is an attribute. So it is an attribute. You provide ID to this one, ID over here. You provide class to this one. From ID and class, the entire paragraph gets affected. But if within paragraph, I want to target a particular set of words, for that I use span. For instance, if I provide ID over here, or let's say class over here, and I mark it as heading, right? Now, if I mark a heading, I, I'll write heading, and I'll write some style, let's say color, red. Now, entire thing gets red. They're not doing same thing. They're very much different. Span is used when I want to target something particularly. So if I want to write, let's say, green, so see, my span is able to target the particular set of words, which my ID or class were targeting the whole element. They were targeting the whole element. Right, right, that's right. Span is in line, ID and class is block level. That's perfectly right. Okay, so I was showing you the extension, right? So let me pull up that extension. So this particular web page. Now, why this particular extension I'm referring to? This is called pesticide. You can get it from your Chrome extensions. And whenever you click this, it creates a document structure on your web page. So I'll just click and you'll see. You see, this structure has been created. It helps me to know which particular element is a block level element. You see, this one is inline element this many small networks interconnected. It creates a box inside this big box. If I go over here, this group of devices, it helps me to know which particular element is block level, which particular element is inline. All this, you see, these are all your block level elements, block level, block level. We come down, these are all block levels. And it would work on any website. So if I write uh, Wikipedia, dot com and i'll open some let's say random computer information 
Now, if I want to check this particular website, I'll click this one and it would tell me, okay, how this particular thing is structured. This particular thing lies in between this one. When I have to clone this website or if I have to create a website, something like this, then it is really helpful to know, okay, how this particular thing is coming. Okay, this is an inline element because this is an anchor tag. Your hyperlink is an inline element, inline element. This is your inline element. It has been emphasized. This is your inline element emphasized. This entire thing is your block level element. So I would recommend you everyone to install this uh, extension called pesticide and it has a bug like logo and it simply creates a very beautiful structure on your web page and tells you which particular element belongs to block level or inline and how to manipulate it. Then we get an idea how to manipulate it. So just a good to know information. So I'll quickly close uh, this one. Yeah. So this was about your span. Any doubts in span? Before we move ahead to divs, the next topic is divs. So any doubts in span? So shall we move ahead? Okay, so let's move ahead and let's create devs for us. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another web page. It would be easier to understand. Dev practice. And in this web page, I'm going to create list of uh, headings and paragraphs. So let's say uh, I'll just create this one and let's uh, write something i'll create i'm just creating a heading and paragraph as or now heading and i'll say this is first information block and i'll create a paragraph associated with it and if you if you ever want to write some dummy uh, list of paragraphs just write lorem l o r e m and click enter automatically some random lines would appear and this is just to create a paragraph looking structure when you do not know the actual content you can use this lorem lorem ipsum to create a random looking paragraph i'll just close this one i'll copy paste this one and i'll simply mark it as second and third now if i have to uh, style heading and paragraph together then i have to individually do it like we used to do it like if i have to style it i can i can uh, let's say style tag okay sorry my bad In this, I have to write H1 and then paragraph and then so on. Or else I have to give class to each of them. Heading and paragraph separately, heading and paragraph, heading and paragraph. Now, the other thing that we can do is contain these two elements, these two block of codes into one single container. That container is called div. So how do we do it? It's just like we call it div. And this div is just like container to hold various elements. So I'll quickly close this div over here. Now, if I provide styling to this div, it would be applied to all these three or all these two as well. So let, let's see. So I'll just run this page. Okay. Okay. Why is it not working? Let's check. go live let's see yeah so this is our paragraph and if i want to style these two i can style it directly over here let's say let me mark it as class as first div now if i want to style this i'll just go to my first div and i'll provide some background color for instance so if i have to do it 
first div. Now, why is it not coming? Because I have not used dot over here to access a class. I'll go over and I'll just provide background color to light green. Let's say light green. Just see. My both paragraph and heading have been provided a single color. If on the other hand, if I provide, let's say class to this second uh, block and will provide same class to my paragraph also, the second paragraph. Now, if I write my second block dot second block, If I write background color to be light, uh, let's say light coral. And if I hit save, just see these have been uh, provided color separately. We see a gap in between them. We see a white margin in between them. This is the white spacing in between them. But while using dev, the spacing was not there. Both the elements were considered as one entity. So this is where dev helps us when we want to deal multiple elements together and we want to provide a single styling to them or we want to deal with them separately, then we use dev. Moreover, how dev helps us. So if I write dev over here, it helps to build kind of sections in your page. So if I write dev over here and hit save, you see this is one section being created. This is one section being created, so easier to understand. So I can write like class of uh, second dev. So now if I access my second div, second div, let's say background color to be, mm, let's keep it light pink. If I hit save, that gap has been filled. The headings have been used. The, that color has been provided to them, but the gap, the the uh, I would say they have been, they, they are inside a box. Now that box is of pink color and in which each individual heading and paragraph are having their own styling. So at any point of time, if you want to fill this gap and you want to treat various elements together, you want to create sections on your page. So if I just remove this one, so different sections have been created. This is first section, second section. Similarly, third section can be styled. So this is where Dev comes in. Dev helps us collect the elements, acts as a container, and we can style Dev and that Dev uh, styling would be applied to all the elements inside that particular div. So this div has been styled with this particular class. So and all these uh, all the elements inside it are are following that uh, particular styling also. So this was very uh, um, brief and easy to understand explanation of div. How styling different elements creates sometimes gap in between them that we do not want. And uh, on the other hand, we want to create sections on our page. For that, we use dev. So any doubts in dev before we proceed ahead? Any questions related to dev? OK, perfect. So I have a nice uh, assignment for you guys in which we would be implementing image. We would be adding anchor tag. We would be using spans. We can use divs also. So that assignment is a tribute page that I, I coded last night. So this is the tribute page that I want all of us to replicate. So a simple heading, a simple, uh, you see, a caption and image and a various timelines. You see this particular section being highlighted that we did with span. This, this particular part, you can uh, deal with span only and you can highlight and bold italicize. We've used emphasize and different tags. This is your anchor tag. So you have to replicate this page. 
using all the information that we have studied so far. In case you face any doubt, best way is to Google it. Just try to Google your doubts. Just try to ask Google, okay, I'm facing this doubt and see what kind of answers you're getting. I Are your uh, way of asking questions right? Just check that. Are you asking right questions that you're getting right answers or not? So I'll share the image, this particular image and the image of this entire page to, with all of you in the chat so that we all can replicate. So let me do that right away. Let me see if... Okay. Do we have an option to share in Zoom? So I'll do one thing. I'll share my drive link with you guys. You can download it from there. Would that be okay? I'll share my Google Drive link. And you can download it from there. Okay. So I'll just paste it over here. Uh, just check if you're able to open this link and uh, okay, I'll message to everyone. Yeah. Just check if everyone is able to open this link and you would see two files. First is your tribute page uh, that holds the entire web page information. And the other one is the image that we are using. So you can store that image in your one of the files in code editor and you can access that image using the relative path that we started. Do use everything, use class, use uh, your IDs, span, divs, emphasize tags, strong tags, and change the unordered list type styling, everything, try everything. And in case you want to try something else also on this page, feel free to do it. Any questions from today's session? We are almost done with the HTML part. Uh, the next part we would be covering are forms and tables. Tomorrow we would be covering forms and tables and then I would uh, tell you how to get icons the icons that we were using on the project, how to get those. Any questions? We have two minutes. Any questions? Anyone want to ask anything? Anyone wants to suggest anything? Okay, guys, if no questions, then we will wrap it up here. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow, same time.